Clay fam. My name is Lisa and I am the maker and owner of of clay jewelry. I make polymer clay earrings like what I'm wearing. These are the Esme's in Latte. I will link them down below if you're interested in checking them out as well as my store. If you are new to this channel, welcome. I'm happy you have found it. I talk about polymer clay business, tips, tricks, tutorials, all that kind of good stuff. So if that is something that interests you, please hit that subscribe button down below and turn on post notifications so you get notified every time I post a new video. If you have been following me along these past few weeks, thank you so much for supporting my channel and subscribing. It means so much to me. And even those of you who go beyond subscribing and following me on Instagram, DMing me and telling me how much you appreciate my videos. Thank you so much. It's so, so sweet to read those messages and it really makes my day. Today we are going to be talking about how to get a perfect and a beautiful bake every time you bake your polymer clay jewelry. If you are experiencing the frustrating things like brittle clay or clay that is always breaking on you, bubbling or burning, this video is for you. We're going to talk about all sorts of tips and tricks to help you with those frustrating situations. So grab something to drink, grab a little snack, sit back and relax, and we're gonna have a little chit chat. So polymer clay is made out of several different materials, polymers, resins, fillers, and coloring agents. When you bake that properly, all of those will melt together and become a very strong plastic-like material. And that's what polymer clay jewelry feels like. It's lightweight, it's plastic, there's a little bit of flex, but the reason why so many people love it is not only it's really easy to work with, but it's also very durable. So if you're finding that your polymer clay jewelry is weak and a brittle, that has to do with the bake. There are three things that you can manipulate and improve upon with your baking technique, and that is temperature, time, and surface. So we're gonna go over those three topics and I'll tell you some tips, hints, and things to look out for. So jumping right into it, let's talk about temperature. Temperature plays an important role with polymer clay jewelry because it not only affects the structural aspect of your polymer clay, but also the physical appearance. If you're experiencing clay that is yellowing or burning or it's becoming so hard that it snaps or maybe it's not feeling like it's curing completely and is really, really flexible, that can be due to baking at the wrong temperature or having an oven that is finicky and bakes unevenly. So what I recommend for you to try, if you haven't already, is getting an external thermometer to place in your oven. You'd be surprised how many ovens actually don't heat as accurately as what the preheated temperature is set at. Having an external thermometer ensures you have accurate measurements of your temperature and you can adjust your oven settings accordingly so that you're baking at the correct temperature. So if you're experiencing yellowing and discoloration, try turning the temperature down a little bit. If it seems like it's not baking enough, try turning it up just a little bit. I would say don't go over like five to 10 degrees of what the recommended temperature setting is on your polymer clay packaging, but play with that and see how that goes. Making that correction with temperature will ensure that you are getting a nice even bake on your clay and you are not burning it, undercooking it, or overcooking it. Now, once you have your temperature all set up and ready to go, now you can manipulate time. And how time plays a role with polymer clay is in two ways. You can spend more time mixing your clay when it's fresh out of the package. And that's important because as I said in the beginning of this video, polymer clay has tons of polymers and fillers, colors. If you think of it like a salad dressing or a vinaigrette, there's layers when it's been sitting, some of the ingredients start to settle and if you were to just pour that on your salad, you'd probably get a bunch of vinegar or a bunch of oil. You wanna shake your salad dressing up before pouring it over. Same thing with polymer clay. When it's been sitting in the packaging, all of those different ingredients kind of settle. So as you mix it, whether by kneading 
or rolling it out or putting it through your clay press, the more time you spend doing that, the more you are evenly dispersing those ingredients so that when it goes to bake, those polymers can really meld together in an even way. So spend more time hand mixing. Once you've done that, when it comes to the baking process, time plays a role because the more time polymer clay has to bake, the more those polymers will break down, mix together, and then have a stronger bond when it starts to cure and harden in the cooling process. So I recommend baking your polymer clay longer. This is just going to greatly help the strength of your clay once it has cured. I personally bake my clay 30 to 45 minutes and you can do that without burning your clay as long as the temperature is correct, which we talked about prior. So you know the things to look out for. You know now whether you need to up the temp or lower the temp or if there's an inaccuracy with your oven. So take that knowledge and apply it with lengthening the time of your bake. You can bake polymer clay for quite a long time, over an hour, without burning it as long as your temperature is correct. Even though your packaging might say bake for 10 to 15 minutes, if you're experiencing brittle clay, try it out. Just try baking it five to 10 minutes longer than what's suggested and then see what you think of the outcome for your jewelry. Because at least for me, it has made a huge, huge difference in the durability. And for my jewelry, that's really important because as you see, it's it's a rainbow piece and each row is only lightly pressed together in the sculpting process. So my design relies on my jewelry being properly baked where those polymers have a chance to truly melt and bond together. Although polymer clay is lightweight and has a little bit of flex, it ultimately should be very strong. You should be able to bend it a little bit before it ever snaps. It shouldn't just fall apart if you're applying a jump ring or wearing it as an earring or if it gets tugged on or dropped. It should stay intact. So if that's not happening, try increasing your bake time because you don't want your hard work to just go to waste and you definitely don't want a customer to experience jewelry that is breaking on them. So now that you're a master with Temperature and time, the last subject that we're going over is surface. Now there are three common surfaces to bake on with polymer clay. That's glass, an aluminum sheet, just kind of like a regular baking sheet, and also ceramic tiles. So if you're getting a really good bake by just fixing your time and temperature issues, baking on glass or a cookie sheet is perfectly fine. However, if you still are experiencing issues with a finicky oven and uneven heating, try working with a glazed ceramic tile. The reason why a glazed ceramic tile is so helpful is because the stone absorbs heat very evenly and spreads that heat across the surface evenly. So when you are baking your jewelry component, regardless of what's going on in the oven, the surface it is baking on is even and accurate, especially when you have your temperature right. So that should certainly help with having evenly baked pieces. Along with that, if you are experiencing discoloration and burning because maybe your oven has a very hot heating component on the top or air is just moving irregularly throughout your oven, you can create a little aluminum foil dome over your baking surface and have your jewelry inside and that will just protect it from the heating elements within your oven so that you're not burning your clay. So it's just an extra step to make sure it stays safe in there. Lastly, playing with surface again, if you are experiencing air bubbles, then you can add a second surface on top of that. You can either place a baking sheet or tile on top of your jewelry component and bake it that way. That light weight and pressure pushing down on your clay is going to help keep those air bubbles within your jewelry rather than them rising to the surface and creating that bumpy, bubbly appearance on your jewelry. It will make a huge, huge difference. Just make sure you're not using any dish or surface that is too heavy as that can smash your jewelry component. Polymer clay does get a little bit softer 
as it's heating up and then it hardens as it cures. Another little bonus tip you can try with your baking supplies if you do have an oven that heats very unevenly is preheating everything in the oven before you add your jewelry in. Put your baking tray in the oven, preheat it, and once it reaches the desired temperature, leave it in there for an extra 15 minutes. After that 15 minute mark, then you can transfer your unbaked jewelry onto those baking surfaces and then you can bake. That helps ensure that the oven is fully hot inside and evenly heated, as well as the surfaces you are baking on. There are so many ways you can play with the surfaces that will help improve your bake. So try out those different things and see how it goes and see what works best for you. As we wrap things up here, I hope you found some little nuggets of knowledge that will help you with your baking of polymer clay. Comment down below if you found any tips helpful. Comment down below if you feel like there are other issues you're having with baking your clay that I didn't touch on in this video. I'd love to try and help you out and answer those questions. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next week. Bye!